Are you a crafter who loves to craft for Christmas time? Then you'll definitely want to keep watching. I have got a compilation put together of some past projects that I've done for Christmas in July that you will definitely want to check out. A playlist of all the original videos will be provided in the video description below. So for this project, I am using this old pickle jar and it's actually from my childhood. My dad, he used this to store bulk rice for the family. And as you can see, there's his writing on the top of the lid. And I thought this would be great to use as my dad is no longer with us. So I thought it would be really fun just to include this piece. I'm cutting out a piece of foam and I used the lid as a template and I needed this to fit inside the jar. So I trimmed down the piece of foam to make sure it would fit inside the jar. And then I'm generously applying hot glue and I'm placing it down at the bottom of the jar. I'm creating a bit of a base inside so I can create a seam. Now I'm using some preserved reindeer moss and I'm going to camouflage that piece of foam. You can get this from local dollar stores, craft stores. So I'm just gonna continue to fill in the edge until you have it covered just like this. And now I am going to be using this red barn. I picked it up from Dollar Tree. Now I'm going to be using this green paint. I am dry brushing some of this paint to give the effect of frost and snow on the barn. Now I like to collect pieces like this from Dollar Tree or other places such as Michael's and I'll look for these things seasonally and then I'll put them aside and use them for Christmas if I feel it's a piece that I can use. So keep that in mind to keep your eyes open to find pieces like this because this is a great piece and I knew it would be perfect for a wintry scene. So I'm going to just continue to add the paint for my snowy effect and then I'm going in and I'm just touching up some of the windows as the paint job wasn't that good. And again, I'm just using my white, white cream paint. So the paint is all nice and dry on the barn and now I have this bottle brush tree and I also have these geese. They are from my stash. I thought they'd be so cute to use as the farm animals, but feel free to use whatever you have. So I'm going to just figure out my placement on the inside of the jar and then I will be hot gluing them into place. So another fun fact is that my aunt and uncle actually have a red barn on their farm. So again, I thought this would be just so fitting for our family. So here you can see I'm generously using some hot glue. I don't want this to topple over and you can fill your jar up with whatever you have, even just doing a big grove of some bottle brush trees would be really fun. Here I decided to move the base off of this one as it was just too bulky on the bottom and I'm just going to use a touch of hot glue to make sure the tree stays in place. And then again, I am also going to hot glue these geese into place. Some chickens or a little cow or some pigs or something would be just absolutely adorable in a scene like this as well. So now I'm going to continue on with the reindeer moss and I'm going to fill in the rest of the foam in between the barn and the animals and the tree. So the moss has filled in this piece nicely and now for something really fun. I am using this faux snow and I am going to sprinkle it all over the inside to make it look like a really nice pretty wintry scene. I thought that this looked so fun. I really love how this looks. So for a fun whimsical touch, I thought I would add some fairy lights. So I've got this battery pack and I want to glue it on the inside of the lid. 
You just want to make sure you glue this down so you can access the battery pack and change out the batteries if needed. And you also want to make sure that you can access the switch. So I am just wrapping the excess cord around the battery pack and then I'm using some hot glue to help hold it into place. Now I have done this before and it works really well. I've never had an issue with the wire melting, but do be careful that you don't touch the nozzle on the wire. All right, so now I'm gonna place all those lights inside and then they'll just look like little fireflies dancing around or little stars. And then I'll put the lid on and then as you can see, it's got my dad's writing on the top. So I am gonna be covering that Of course, you can use any fabric you have, but if I really like the look of burlap for a farmhouse country Christmas. So I had this piece in my stash and I'm just gonna cut it down to size. And of course, I'm gonna just remove some of the threads to create that frayed look. And then I like to always kind of scrunch up my fabric just to give it that really rough and rugged look. So I'm really liking how this is going to look and I just wanted to tack it down a little bit. So I'm just adding a little bit of hot glue and then I'm gonna press the fabric into place. Now again, to help hold this down and to give it a decorative touch, I'm using some Baker's twine. I love to use Baker twine for projects like this. I'm just going to wrap it around the top. Feel free to use any color that you have or that you can get your hands on. I'll wrap it around several times and then I'm going to tie a knot. Jute twine would be a really nice addition as well. I like to just tie a knot on the ends of my Baker's twine just so it doesn't unravel. So you can leave it just like this if you'd like. I'm just trimming it up a little bit. I felt like it was a little lopsided. Uh, but again, you can use any fabric and I like it, I really do. But I felt like it just needs a little bit more just to really bring in that country Christmas feel. So decided to decorate the top. I'm just using a selection of greenery and pine cones and bells. These stems are from my stash, but I believe I got them from Michael's a few years ago. They're just little pieces that I had snipped off a larger branch. And as you can see, it has a little bit of glitter for a frosted look. The pine cones, I actually got these from Dollar Tree. They were off of a garland. I got them, oh, a year or two ago, and they have a really pretty frosted look. So I'm adding some of those, but feel free to collect some from nature and add those as well. These are some beautiful bells that I had in my stash. They've kind of got that primitive red color. I love it. This is an awesome piece. I am really happy with how it turned out. I am so excited to use it at Christmas time, and I would love to know what you think by leaving me a comment down below. So for this project, I'm using this LED lantern light that I picked up from Dollar Tree. They've had these for the last two years and they are great to alter. So I'm just going to pop out the bottom. It's really easy to remove. And then I'm gonna use a mix of some burnt umber along with a touch of black paint as I wanted a dark brown. So you're gonna need a rag and a paintbrush and you'll be applying this paint onto the lantern and you'll remove the excess with the rag. Now I typically give my plastics a coat of gesso, but I found that these lanterns actually took craft paint fairly well. It was kind of a bit of a porous surface, so I didn't bother to seal it up. And it, like I said, it worked well, but I did seal it at the end once the paint was all dry and I'll show you what I used here in a bit. 
So I'm covering the entire surface of the lantern, both inside and out. And I will show you here in a minute that I am actually also painting the base. I wanted to create the look of a wood lantern and I thought that this brown paint would work really well. So I'm just going to give everything about two coats and I'm going to allow it to dry in between. So this is with one application of paint and I'm going to paint the inside now. I had allowed it to dry first before I held this lantern because I didn't want my fingerprints to be showing. Here I'm going over the surface again with another touch and you can see how much better the coverage was. All right, so I'm using some deco art matte varnish and I'm going to give the lantern a, a coat of this varnish and that will help seal in the paint so it doesn't flake off. This is just a precautionary measure. Feel free to use whatever sealant you like to use for your craft projects. Okay, so the sealant is all nice and dry and now it's time to decorate. I have this evergreen pipe cleaner. I picked it up from my local dollar store and I created a little wreath out of it. Now I did have a viewer uh, confirm that you can actually get the same stuff at Hobby Lobby down in the US. So if you're in search of it, then I would definitely check out your store. So I'm applying this using some hot glue. I wanted to kind of camouflage the candle a little bit and I thought this did the trick. Now I wanted to just add a bit more texture. So I'm using these flocked leaves. Again, this was just from my stash. It's leftover pieces from, uh, I believe it was from Dollar Tree. They had these beautiful spring florals. I also got these pip berries again from Dollar Tree. A lot of my supplies come from Dollar Tree because it's just an affordable way to craft. And so I, I tend to use these things over and over again. They're my favorites, but of course, feel free to check out your local craft stores to see what you can find or check out even places like a thrift store or your local dollar store. I am just making sure that my top of my lantern fits over this little wreath that I made and now I'm adding the little berries for a beautiful festive touch. Okay so now I want to decorate the top but first I'm going to be just tying a little bow on the top and then I will be adding a hanger at one point as I thought this would be really cool to use as an ornament but I needed to decorate this piece first. So I'm just going to tie this beautiful hemp cording that's in its gorgeous green color around the top. I double bowed it and then uh, you can of course use any color that you have in your stash or use any kind of trim that you have. So once you've got that in place, then you can start to add some greenery. I'm again using these flocked leaves along with some of the evergreen uh, pipe cleaner that I have right here. So I am going to be adding the pip berries to the top as well, but after having a little look here, um, I realized that I had covered up my bow too much. So I decided just to tie another simple little bow and I am going to add that to the middle of the little cluster that I have going on right here. I think, I think that looks just so much better. So I'm just again using hot glue for all these little steps. And now I'm going to go in and add the little berries.
So once you're done decorating your little lantern, you can pop the base back into place and then it's ready to be hung in a tree if you have an ornament hook on it, or you could even use this on a tiered tray or in any little vignette that you have. I think it is so adorable. And as you can see, I missed a glue string. <laughs> Gotta remember to move the, remove those glue strings, but I really love how this piece turned out. So I'm going to be using these gorgeous vintage ornaments that I had got from the thrift store and I thought they would be perfect for farmhouse country Christmas decor. Now this is actually a project that I had done last Christmas but I wanted to share it with all of you again because it's one of my favorites. I have this carved out wood bowl that my mom had given me and I'm going to fill it out with some moss. You can have uh, excelsior as well and I'm actually going to be using some moss that I had foraged from the forest. Now I've got a video all about that. I will have that link down below in the iCards above as well as in a pinned comment. So once you have some moss or whatever filler you are going to be using in place then you can start to lay out your gorgeous ornaments. As you can see here, I'm just adding little bits of the reindeer moss as well. It just helps to cushion and hold all those beautiful ornaments into place. Now another option you could do is fill this up with some florals or some pine cones would be absolutely gorgeous as well. But I don't know, there's just something about a bread bowl and moss filled with vintage ornaments. Oh, this is just one of my most favorite pieces that I've created. Now I'm adding a touch of faux snow. Again, I just really like that look. I just find it just helps to create that beautiful wintry feel. But of course, use whatever you love to use for your Christmas decor. This is such an easy project to do and it's great. I think it turned out amazing. I love it on our table and it is a great way to, to share any of your vintage ornaments or maybe some heirloom pieces that you have. birdhouses up from Dollar Tree. I have also seen them at Michael's and other craft stores and I'm going to give a one a coat of the Tuscan Red and the other one a coat of the Leaf Green. As you can see I'm just painting the body of the birdhouse. I'm going to be painting the base and the roof a different color. So as you can see I've set the red one aside to dry and now I'm doing the green and I will allow them both to dry after one coat of paint each. I only did one coat because I wanted the wood grain to show through. All right so now I am going to use burnt umber and I'm going to be painting the roof with this color. You can paint your bird houses of course any color that you like for your Christmas decor. All right, so I had wanted to maybe use these as ornaments. So I'm using some eye hooks and I found the center, of course, using my ruler and I'm using a nail and I'm just going to mark that off. And then I tried to push it in here. I don't know why, but I did. Anyways, I ended up digging out my hammer and I hammered in just a little bit of a hole enough to give me a guide so I could put my eye hook in. Now, of course, if you have uh, a drill, then please use that. But I just wanted to just try this out to see if I could get it to work for any of you who do not have any tools. I'm actually curious, how many of you use power tools for your crafting? Let me know down below. So I got those eye hooks in place and now it's time to decorate. I got these tiny little wood slices. My mom had actually gifted these to me and I thought they would be perfect 
to put on the roof of these bird or one of these bird houses. So I'm going to use some hot glue and I just place them in a way so that they overhang on the edge as well as the bottom there. And I'm going to again treat them like shingles. So I'm going to just glue them all the way across the bottom to start and then I'll start to layer them. I've also tried to make sure that I tested the pieces out to make sure that they're going to fit on the birdhouse properly and then I glued them into place. Okay, so I've got the first row in place and now I'm going to do the second row. I am going to just add just enough glue so that the bottom and the top touch the roof line and my bottom row and I'm holding them there till the glue sets. So I'm going to just continue on to fill in both sides. Now I left the peak on the one side till last, as you can see here, because I'm going to do them at the same time to make sure I have both sides even. So I'll glue one into place and I'll put the other one beside it and then I just kind of push it into place until they're both even. You do have a few seconds until the glue sets up. So I'm going to do that all the way across the peak of the roof. Okay, for another option, I'm using birch bark. Again, I foraged this from the forest. So you can check out that foraging video. I am going to just cut it down. This stuff cuts down really, really easily. And I try to get some pieces that are nice and flat. And that just makes it easier to work with for projects such as this. I'm just trying to piece this one side together, but I end up just finding just a straight up regular piece and I'm adding some hot glue and I'm just making sure I get it right up to the edge because I do not want the birch bark to lift. So generously apply the glue, add the birch bark and then flip it over and press until the glue sets. So if you don't have birch bark, you could do some other alternatives such as fabric, scrapbook paper, and um, of course, feel free to cover it up any way you'd like, or you could just paint it out a different color. My birch bark is all in place and some of the bark was lifting in a few areas. So I'm just adding a little bit more hot glue here and there. And I'm also trimming any of the edges as needed. Okay, so I'm going to start to decorate. Again, I am using these evergreen pipe cleaners and I thought it would be really pretty just to add a touch of this Christmas greenery around the base of the, the bird houses. So I'm just applying that using the hot glue. some pieces to the peak of the roof as well. I wanted to hide that seam but I also needed to work around the eye hook so I cut some pieces down to size and fitted around the eye hook. Okay, so now for the red birdhouse, I'm creating a little miniature wreath and I'm going to glue that around the whole of the birdhouse. Now another fun little touch is you could add a little bird if you have the right size. I didn't have the right size in my stash, so I'm just decorating it with some beautiful greenery and some other added touches. So for the red house, I decided that I'd add these red pip berries into the wreath just for a pretty added festive touch. Mm -hmm. 
For the green one, I decided to use pieces of branches as well as some lichen, and I really wanted to keep this pretty natural. So I didn't like the little edge that was under the roof line of the birch bark. So I'm just gonna cover that up with a little twig on both sides, both front and back. Now I'm adding some of the lichen in amongst the greenery. So now I decided that I also wanted to add some branches on the front of the birdhouse. Of course, this is totally optional. Decorate your birdhouse however you like. Uh, I just thought it would look really cute as if it was actually kind of sitting in a tree in a way. It just kind of gives that illusion. So I just figure out where I want my little pieces to go and then I glue them into place. So I think these are looking great. And now I'm going to use some Baker's twine to create my hanger. But of course, again, you could omit the hanger and use these just in some vignettes or on a tear tray. But I have a few birdhouses in my Christmas tree ornament collection already. So I thought this would be absolutely fitting. These are adorable. And again, as you can see, I forgot to pull some glue strings. So you're going to see a few of those again. But another trick you could do is use a hot uh, blow dryer and that will melt those little glue strings away really, really well. So this next farmhouse country Christmas DIY is a thrift store makeover. So I got found this cute little planter rocking chair at my local thrift store. It was only $1.99 and I thought it was so cute. It just needed a little cleaning. So I took a rag and now I am going to give the entire piece a coat of this Whisper Chalk Paint by Deco Art. So you'll want to add, oh, probably about two to three coats of the paint, allow it to dry well in between each coat. The paint is all nice and dry and now I'm going to distress all the edges and places where a rocking chair would typically have wear marks. You can see how well this is distressing and the dark stain from the wood is coming through really, really well. So I'm just gonna continue to work in a couple of different grits. Uh, I believe I picked up these sanding blocks at a store called Dollarama here in Canada, but of course you can find all kinds of sanding blocks at your harder hardware store as well. So I'm just going to continue to work here. I'm focusing again on some specific spots to create that really worn look. So here I'm using a coarser grit just to again remove a bit more of the paint and also to create some scratches. So I am done with my sanding block and now I'm going to give this piece a coat of my matte varnish and I find that when I apply this it really helps the distress marks to really pop. So you're going to set that aside and allow that to dry well. And once it's dry, you can then fill in the whole portion. So I am going to be using this little canning jar. It fits perfectly. And what I've done is actually added just a few fresh stems of greenery and tucked in some baubles. I think it looks gorgeous for that country farmhouse look. But of course, you could use this any time of the year and just refill the little jar with whatever you like for the season. 
I love it. Love, love, love this piece so much. And I know others have found these rocking chairs at the thrift stores as well. For this first ornament, I'm using this three and a half inch natural wood slice. I picked this up from my lo local craft store, but you can pick them up in lots of different places. I am adding this eye hook to uh, the top. I'm just using a nail just to kind of pierce through the bark of this one. And then I'm gonna just press and start to turn this in. I didn't end up having to use a tool and that just helped me get a better grip on this and I was able to get it in quite easily. So that is going to be our ornament hanger. Now I'm gonna trace around our wood slice and it's because I am doing something I have never done before and I've been wanting to try it for a really long time and that is wood burning. I'm creating my design here on my paper and this is just to give me a rough idea of what I want my design to look like. Just something very simple. I had seen lots of inspiration on Pinterest, so I'm just kind of basing my design off of what I've seen online. And of course, since this is a lumberjack theme, I thought it would be fitting to do a tree design in the hills or in the mountains. So feel free to erase your mistakes like I am doing here. And then once you are satisfied with your design, you can then go ahead and do it on your wood slice. Now, thankfully, pencil does erase on wood as well. So I did end up having to change it a little bit, but I just, um, yeah, used my eraser and it worked really well. So I'm just gonna continue to work on my design on my wood slice and then we'll move to the next step. All right, so this is the tip I'm using for my wood burner and it's all ready to go. Make sure you have got a hot plate beside you. And then I'm just gonna go for it. I'm tracing over my pencil lines with the wood burner. I have never done this before. So you're seeing me do this for the very first time. And I have to say, I really like it. It's gonna take a bit of time for me to get used to, uh, but I could definitely see myself doing this more so yeah I liked it so once I went over the main pencil lines I just went ahead and I feathered in some more branches on my trees I thought it just filled it in really nice nicely and gave a little bit more of a realistic look and now I'm just going over my hill lines as well I have to say I'm pretty impressed that this was my first time and I was able to uh, do this it was great so now I'm just erasing my pencil lines and then I'm going to paint in some snow. So I'm just using this off white paint and I'm mixing it in with a bit of water. I just wanted it to be a bit more like a wash. I didn't want a thick, thick paint because I wanted to see the wood grain come through as well. So I'm just gonna fill in the snowy area and I'm making sure not to cover up the wood burned lines. Once you have the snow hills filled in, you can then go ahead and tap some little dots using the back of your paintbrush to make it look like it's snowing. I've allowed it to dry and now I'm going to add my trim. So I've got this just plain ribbon from my stash and I'm using that to create my hanger. So I'm just going to put it through my eye hook and then just tie a knot at the back. And then this is some black and red gingham. It reminded me of buffalo check and buffalo check is a pattern that lumberjacks wear. So I thought it was so fitting to use this for this particular ornament. So I'm just going to tie a simple bow out of that ribbon and then I am going to use hot glue to attach it. And I got this ribbon from Dollar Tree. This was so fun for, to make and I actually can't wait to make more. I think it would make wonderful gifts, especially on top of a present or something. I love how this turned out.
So I thought I'd create another forest themed ornament. I've got these white ornaments from Dollar Tree. They're plastic. And I had this pine cone evergreen napkin in my stash. I will be using some decoupage glue in the matte finish from Deco Art. So to remove the backing of our napkin, I like to use some tape and that will lift those layers really easily. Sometimes the napkins just have the two layers. This one had three, so I needed to remove two backing and I'll definitely reveal that beautiful pattern so much better. So before we move on, I need to rip down my napkin into more usable pieces. I just like to tear it. Uh, I don't like to cut it. I just find that it creates more organic, smooth edges when I go to decoupage. I love to decoupage. I really, really do. I think it's so, so satisfying. And so what I am just doing here is just your basic application. You put a layer of the decoupage glue on your surface and then press your napkin or tissue paper, whatever you are using into the glue. And then you want to go over top with another layer of, layer of glue. You do want to make sure that you get uh, some underneath properly. That will prevent any bubbling from happening. So I'm going to continue to work on my layers and then I will set it aside and allow it to dry. Okay, so my ornament is all dry and it looks awesome, but I wanted to decorate the top of the ornament. So I have these evergreen pipe cleaners. I picked these up at my local dollar store. I believe somebody said you can get something similar to these at Hobby Lobby down in the States. I'm not sure though. I'm in Canada and so you'll have to check out your local craft stores. I applied that to the topper. I wanted to camouflage that. I didn't think it was very fitting with this forest ornament. And then I am making just a simple loopy bow out of some green jute twine I had in my stash. And again, I'll just be using my hot glue to apply that. So now I'm going to continue to decorate the top. I have these really pretty kind of frosted pine cones and I'm cutting them down just so that they're not so big and bulky. And I am going to glue those in around the topper. Next, I'm adding some little pieces of our evergreen pipe cleaner as well, just to tie it all in together. I think it's looking great. I am really, really loving these. This decoupage project was so easy to do as well. It again would make wonderful gifts if you made like a set of three for somebody. So I am going to go ahead and tie on a piece of our green jute string. <laughs> struggling with it a little bit there so I used my wire cutters as a support to prevent it from rolling off on me. Um, I did end up going ahead and filling it in all the way around. I just thought it looked a little better but feel free to do any way you'd like. I am loving it. It is perfect for that forest and nature look fitting if you are wanting to go with that lumberjack theme for your tree as well. All right, now I'm into the nautical look. I got these decorative pieces from Dollar Tree. I'm using some spa blue and sea spray blue. Those are both deco art craft paints along with some metallic white pearl paint and my favorite glitter paint that again is put out by deco art as well and it is the ice crystal so i am painting my ornaments i give one to two coats on each and then i allow them both to dry well they're all nice and dry and now it's up time to apply these different finishes so i'm starting off with the ice crystal in the ultra fine glitter it's like gl glamour glitter paint it is my favorite it really is it's such a beautiful delicate glitter and it has such a pretty sheen to it 
I apply two coats of that and allow it to dry well. Next, I am going to use the pearl paint or the metallic white pearl on the starfish. Now, this is the first time I'm using this one. I'm not sure, maybe it would have worked better if I mixed it in with the paint. You could do it either way, but um, I really like how this looks as well. So I've got my starfish all nice and dry. So I'm just going to use this blue baker's twine. I'm just going to attach a loop on the back, but I thought it would be really fun to use some uh, little bells. So I had these bells in my stash and they were a pretty blue color. Just using some tape on the end of my twine just to make it easier for me to string these little bells on. I just thought that um, by adding the bells, it would just add to that Christmas look. And feel free to omit this part, or if you want, you could even use some beads or even some buttons I thought would be really pretty. So I'm just going to glue this using some hot glue on the back side of our starfish. So the bells were giving me a little grief here. So I decided just to add the tiniest little bit of hot glue in the cluster and that helped to hold them into place where I wanted them to be. So this next step is optional, but I'm using an iridescent a sequin actually and I'm adding a little dollop of hot glue and I'm placing it over the knot I just kind of wanted to camouflage that knot it felt it just I don't know just looked a little untidy so uh, I just did that and now I'm just removing the tape off of our hanger um, I am tying a knot just above the bells that'll again help to hold them into place and then um, I'm ready to work on the sand dollar so for the sand dollar, you can see the beautiful shimmer that it has. It's so, so pretty. Again, I'm using the Baker's twine, but this time I'm just looping it through one of the holes on this piece. And I'm going to tie just a basic knot. I'm adding some bells to this piece as well. So again, I'm just adding some tape to the top of our twine to make it easier for us to thread these beautiful bells on. I believe these bells were actually vintage. I found them at the thrift store and they had a little bit of a different look than you would see at a dollar store. They are really pretty. So here they are, they're all ready to be hung on a tree. I really had fun making these. All right, so I dove into my stash of branches. You'll need a branch that's got a fork such as this one. And then I'm using this miniature wreath that I had in my stash, but if you don't have one of those, that's okay. I have a tutorial on how to make some bird's nests. That's right, we're making a bird's nest. So I'm just using a little bit of Spanish moss and I thought it would be really easy to make a simple little bird's nest using the wreath such as this. So I'm just applying some of the Spanish moss in the middle using some hot glue. All right, so I'm just trimming up our branch 
and I'm going to apply the nest to the Y that you see right there on our branch. I want it to look like it's nestled right in there. So I'm just figuring out my placement, where do I put my hot glue, and I'm just going to put a good amount of hot glue and then press the nest into place and hold it till it sets. Once it's set, then you can start to just trim the branch right down. You know what size you need, but of course it depends on the branch that you have. Now I'm going to decorate it. Again, I'm using some faux snow and these beautiful frosted pine cones. I got those from Dollar Tree. They're so pretty. But I wanted to just add a touch of snow first before I continued on. So I'm adding it to the branches using my hot glue and pressing the snow into place. And then I'm going to add some on the nest as well. So here I am starting to apply my pine cones using some hot glue, but I had pulled these off of a garland that I had picked up from uh, Dollar Tree. So I was just cutting off the wires as you could see right there. And again, just use your hot glue and press these into place and hold till set. Dollar Tree has had these wired pine cone garlands the last couple of years and they come out with some different styles. So definitely check your store out. So once you've got some pine cones into place, I decided to add some evergreen. Again, these beautiful sprigs are from Dollar Tree. They've got some glitter and kind of a frosted look. And I like the delicate fronds that they had. I thought it looked a lot like an evergreen. So I'm just adding some little snippets here and there until I am happy with the look that we are going for. If you want, you could definitely add some like holly leaves. That would be really pretty. Some flowers, anything you have in your stash. So I've got my nest all decorated now to add a little bird. Now I would have used a red cardinal if I had one in my stash. I didn't. So I'm just using what I have. I have this cute little pink bird. I still think it looks really pretty. Some little roses would be really cute in there as well with this bird, but I'm just going with what I have. All right, now to create the hanger. I'm using jute twine and I'm tying just a basic knot onto each branch. Once you have a strand tied onto each branch end, then you can gather all those strands together. And what you wanna do is just hang it and figure out uh, where it is balanced and sitting steadily. And that is where you are going to tie all those clusters together. And that will create your hanger. All right, so now I am going to just add a dollop of glue on the knots that are on the branches that will help to hold the knots together so they don't unravel and just trim off any of the excess twine and then it's ready to be hung on the tree. I am loving this. This is going to look so cute in our tree come the Christmas season and this would be great to make for a craft fair or again a gift and you could use any decoration or bird that's in your stash. I am going to be starting this wreath off with a selection of some greenery. These are just trimmed off off of some uh, flower bushes that I had in my stash. I picked them up from like Dollar Tree or other dollar stores and craft stores. I'm just laying them out and placing them on the wreath where I like. As you can see, there's a little bit of hot glue left on some of these, so I'm just pulling that off. I like to reuse these pieces over and over again whenever I can. If you're not able to find your own rope wreath, you can make your own with a wreath form and rope, or you could use a grapevine wreath. Once you have your layout figured out, you can then start to glue these pieces into place. Mm -hmm. 
If you don't have anything like this, you can definitely use whatever you have on hand. All right, so this is a little tip for you. I like to use Dollar Tree's tabletop trees as my greenery for different arrangements. It's really an expensive way to use some Christmas greens. You just have to cut them down to size and then glue the pieces into place as you like. I am just going to continue to work here adding in my Christmas green. That way here it'll tie in that Christmas theme that I am going for. So here we've got it all into place. I'm adding just a little bit of extra glue here and there wherever I feel like things feel a little bit loose. All right, so now for some seashells and I also have some Christmas baubles in there. I got these, they were in my stash for a very long time. I don't even remember where I got them anymore, uh, but you can pick up shells from dollar stores, craft stores, and online as well. So I wanted to carry the color from the jute rope down below. So I'm just creating a really casual loopy bow using some jute twine. I also had created some really nice long tails to go with it. I just thought it would look really pretty. So I'm just creating more loops here and then I'm going to be using a wire to just bind it all together, trim off the wire and then you can glue it into place. So believe it or not, I have not made much as far as coastal or nautical themed items. So I thought this would be a really great challenge for me to create. So I glued the bow in place and now I'm going to continue to place my shells in the different areas throughout. I like to figure out my placement first before I commit to gluing these into place. I just want to make sure it is all nice and balanced. So of course I am going to be using hot glue yet again to attach all of the shells into place. Uh, feel free to use your favorite adhesive if you know that something else would work well with these shells, but I just wanted this to be quick so I went with my glue gun. Another nice thing about using hot glue is that I actually find that it peels off really easy as you saw me do earlier. So if you ever want to redo this wreath, it is easy enough to do. So I have all my shells into place and I decided I wanted to add these pine cones. I picked them up from Dollar Tree last year. They have kind of like an antique silver or gold look to them and I thought that they would work really well with the shells. So I'm just clipping them off the garland and then again, figure out my placement and then I'll go ahead and use some hot glue to attach them. Now. The end product actually does not show the little silver baubles that I had selected. I'll show you what that looks like here in a moment, but I just felt like it didn't quite work with what the look I was going for. But feel free to add anything you'd like. You could add berries, even maybe a few little florals here and there. The sky's the limit when it comes to making wreaths. So you can see how those little baubles look and it wasn't quite the look I wanted. I wanted a rustic coastal look so I removed them all and I just kept with what I had here. Now I went ahead and added just a few more pieces of my Christmas greens here and there just fill in a few gaps and then it's ready to be hung on the door or on your wall. I have to say, I really, really think this turned out great. It is the look I was going for, rustic coastal, and I think it would be great to carry you out through the winter months. Okay, so this is my next wreath. I found this moss wreath from Dollar Tree. I couldn't believe I found it at my local Dollar Tree. So for anybody who may not be able to find these moth, moss wreaths in Dollar Tree, Hobby Lobby carries them so you could check that place out. 
and a substitute would be a grapevine wreath. So it felt a little flimsy, so I wanted to strengthen it up a little bit by wrapping it with some jute twine. And I also thought that it kind of created a nice rustic look for this wreath that I'm trying to create. So as you can see, as I'm wrapping it, I'm also crossing it over on itself just to create a little bit of interest. So I'm just going to tie it off with a knot and then we're ready to move on to the next step. I made these primitive style battery operated lights a couple of years ago and they have been holding up so well. I'll have the tutorial on how I made these linked in the iCards above, in the description bo box below, as well as in the pinned comments. So you can find that tutorial there. So I removed the batteries for now as I want to attach this on the inner portion of the wreath. Now I do need to create a hole. So I'm just going to be using a knife along with my scissors and I'm going to work away on the wreath to create a hole. I just make sure I don't punch the hole all the way through. So as you can see, I'm using my candle to just make sure I get the right size and I'll just continue to remove any of the insides as I go. Turns out this wreath was actually made out of straw, which I thought was pretty cool. Okay, so I managed to get my hole made and you can see it right there. And I am gonna be using a generous amount of hot glue on the inside of the hole, and then I'll place my candle inside that hole. I just kind of twist it and push it into place until it's set, and then I'll just hold it there until the glue sets enough so I can let it go. Now for the natural rustic part of this, I forged these branches. Again, I'm going to have another video for you if you're interested in foraging. I'm going to have that video linked in the iCards description box as well as in the pinned comments for your convenience. So I am just going to figure out my placement yet again and then glue these branches into place. I forage these from my local forest and I love them. I think they're great with all that lichen on them and they have a really nice shape to them. You can definitely use some flowers on the bottom or some greenery of some type. Fill in that area any way you'd like. So once you have your branches in place, you can then go ahead and add some Christmas greens if you'd like. Again, I am using this Dollar Tree tabletop Christmas tree, cutting it down to size, and then I will be gluing those into place. Now, I didn't bother to figure out the placement for these ones. I just kind of stuck them in here and there. I wanted a wild look, but if you aren't sure, then of course, feel free to figure out your placement first and then go ahead and glue them. So I'm just continuing to add the greenery until I get the look that I am happy with. So now I thought I wanted to add a pop of color. I found these pip berry garlands from Dollar Tree. They've carried them the last couple years, so definitely check your store out. So I am just taking a strand, wrapping it around my finger, and then cutting it off. I wanted it to look like a vine of berries that's from the forest. So I thought this would look really, really cool. So I'm just gonna continue to wind some pieces around my finger and cut them off and then put them into place until I get a look that I'm really happy with and there's enough color dispersed throughout. 
You can then, of course, use your hot glue and put these into place. Now, the nice thing about these is that they are wires, so you can bend them and curl them around a branch if you'd like. They are great. I actually absolutely love these pip berries. I've got quite a few of the strands. Okay, so now I want to create my hanger. I'm just using jute twine. I folded it in half and created a loop. Pull the loop through the back side through your circle and hook it around. Then pull your two straight strands through that loop and you've got a nice little hanger. Then I am going to just tie a knot at the top and I just want that loop big enough so it'll hang on a wreath hook. So once I've got that in place, you can then see how easy it is to replace those batteries and then it is ready to be hung. I really like the cozy, rustic and natural look of this wreath. It is perfect for my decor. I am absolutely loving it. I can't wait to hang it up during the Christmas season. For this project, you're going to need a selection of some branches and you want them to be fairly straight. I'm going to be measuring one that is around six inches and another one at around four inches. And as you can see, I am creating a cross. The Advent season is a really important time to my family, but so is Easter. And I thought this would be a great way to commemorate both. So as you can see, I glued the two sticks together and now just for some added strength and stability, I'm using some crochet twine or, or sorry, string, uh, but you can use anything that you have that you like. Embroidery floss would be pretty as well. And as you can see, I tied it on and now I am wrapping it around the cross section and that will really give it a lot of strength. I'm now just going to tie it off with a simple knot and then you can trim off the excess. So I have a large selection of some different tags and I just wanted to show you the different types that I have here. I've got wood ones and craft paper. You can get all different colors and types. I'm just going to show you here as well what each type would look like. I really like the craft paper and I decided to go with the smaller one out of this selection. So I wanted to stamp out the words that go with each Advent theme, joy, love, hope and peace. They may be slightly different for you and that is fine. Just adjust accordingly. And I had just some words that already had joy and love, but then I went into my peg stamps and spelled out the other words that I needed. I also wanted to add just a little bit of a decorative touch. So I'm just going into my stash of stamps and finding some Christmas greenery and I'm going to be using black ink and just stamping onto the tag as needed. So now I decided that I wanted to ink up the edges. So I'm just running my ink pad all around the edge, just like you saw there. And now I'm just going to allow that to dry a little bit. And then I'm going to get my string again. I'm going to be using the uh, crochet string again, and I'm going to tie my little tag onto the cross. I did a knot first because I found that it kind of didn't hang quite right. So uh, when I was kind of playing around with this, you can see here I was fiddling around and I just didn't like the way that was hanging. So I decided, you know what, I'm going to tie a knot first. And that just kind of provided some stability around the tag without it kind of flopping around on the string. Next, I then tied the string around the cross section and again, I just tied a knot. So I just thought that this was a beautiful way to remember the Advent season and remember what Christ had done for us. So to do that though, I need to 
attach a hanger. So my plan was to add one to the tree each weekend as we celebrate the Advent season. So for the hanger, I've just folded my string in half and then I'm gonna tie the two strands and make a knot. I'm just adjusting the knot accordingly so that I know it's long or short enough for a hanger. I'm adding just a dollop of hot glue on the top of the stick and then pressing the little knot in place and then it's ready to be hung on the tree. I also included one tag for Christ. For this next project, you're going to need a wood slice. This one is prox approximately six inches across. I am giving it a coat of some black chalk paint and I'm painting right up to the edge as close as I can. Feel free to use some craft paint if that's what you have, but I just like the coverage that the chalk paint gave. So that's what I decided to go with. I allowed it to dry and next I wanted to create some beautiful splatters using this iridescent gold by Peebo Plank Paints. I picked this paint up at Michael's a couple of years ago and I really love this antique gold color. I'm just diluting it a bit with some water and then using a stiff bristle brush and another handle I am just adding some splatters to the surface. I wanted it to kind of look like a beautiful starry night. I'm going to allow that to dry well and then I am going to now create a manger. I already pre-cut my pieces from some vintage book paper. Now the manger is the feeding trough for animals and that is the place where baby Jesus was laid to rest. So I wanted to create kind of the wood slats as if it was actually made from wood not a piece of paper so I'm just adding some lines using a sharpie and that I'm hoping will create kind of like a woodsy look what I am creating right now is actually called mixed media art it's something I absolutely love to do it's where you just take different mediums and create a piece of art and it's so so forgiving so for the manger, as you can see, I added some gel paint and I'm doing the same techniques on the legs of the feeding trough or manger. And I'm going to place them to see where I like them on the, on the wood slice. And I'm going to attach them using some matte decoupage glue. Now I'm just being careful where I do place the glue because I didn't want to build up too many layers to distort the beautiful starry night that I had created. So I'm just applying the glue exactly where I kind of needed it as you can see me doing right here. So I didn't bother adding any glue over top. Uh, I just did the undercoat and then, and then while the glue is drying, I am going in with my pencil and I am creating a star. Like it's a nice bright shining star in the night sky. Next, I am now creating the silhouette silhouette of baby Jesus. I just did a head and the swaddled cloth as you can see right here I just kept it simple and I think it's just so effective next I am going to be using some modeling paste now modeling paste is uh, very textured it's kind of gritty um, I wanted to give some texture to this piece so I added the modeling paste over the lines that I created using uh, a, pa a mini palette knife you don't have to do this step if you don't want uh, but if you are looking for some modeling paste then you can pick this up at Michael's it's the artist loft brand I think it's a great affordable way to try it out next I'm applying some of the modeling paste just on the edge of the manger to make it look like it's hay and of course you could just paint that in if you choose 
it's completely up to you. This, again, this is mixed media art, so you can do lots of different techniques. So now I am going to start to paint my images in. I'm starting off with some skin toned paint for baby Jesus head. Of course, feel free to um, use any colors that you would like. And then I am going to add tan for the swaddling cloth. Now it might almost look the same in the, in the video, but they, they are different once you look at them close up. I do end up having to paint them in a couple of times, drying in between. So I just wanted to create a bit more texture and dimension where the manger is. So I'm just going in and adding a bit of the tan color over top just to kind of make it look like it's been old and sitting around for a while. So now I'm just going in and adding just a little bit more paint. This is a lighter shade of a cream color. Again, you just want to create some dimension. So now everything is dry. I am going to now add antique gold and cream over the area where there is the hay on the edge of our manger. I'm using the two colors to just, again, create some dimension. Next, I'm going in with my gold acrylic Peebo paint and I'm going to go over the star. Now, as I was doing this, I realized that perhaps I should have maybe tinted my modeling paste with the paint because I actually did kind of struggle a little bit painting this and making sure I had full coverage. I added just a hint to the outside of the star shape just to make it look like it's really glowing in the sky. I'm now adding a little bit of that gold paint onto baby Jesus. I just wanted it to look like the star was glowing down on him and just bringing in all that glory to earth. I've allowed that to dry and now I'm going in and I'm just using my black Sharpie to outline. That just really helps to make everything pop. So you can see I'm just going around the manger and then I will go around baby Jesus. I give the entire piece a coat of some matte varnish and then it's ready to be put on display and I am absolutely in love with this piece. For this next project, I am using these canvas sheets from burlapfabric.com. So these canvas sheets are printable. So I created myself uh, an image in Canva and all I did was typed up Oh Holy Night, chose the fonts that I liked and then I just arranged them on an eight by eight and a half by 11 inch graphic. And then I am inserting some stars that are free to use. These are all free to use within Canva. I saved it to my computer and then I printed it. Now I did end up printing it down to the size of a five by seven for the project that I am using. But this was my test image and I have to say I was blown away at how well this printed. It is laminated on the back so that's why it went through the printer so easily. Here is my image in a smaller size and I wanted to place it inside of this canvas, sorry, this wood canvas panel I picked up from Dollarama here in Canada. You can get these online and at other craft stores as well. I needed to trim it down to size, so I'm just figuring out my measurements and I'm just going to mark it off with a pencil. So now that I have my size figured out, I'm just going to trim it down using some scissors and I'm going to set any scrap aside for later use. Oh, 
Right, so now I'm gonna give my canvas board a coat of the gel stain in the color Walnut. I will use a combination of a paintbrush to get right in all those crevices and I'll be using a rag to remove any excess or actually to even apply it. I really love Walnut Stain. I think it's such a gorgeous color. And this particular brand is from Deco Art. I'm also gonna be doing the sides and the back. All right, so I'm allowing my canvas board to dry. Now I'm gonna just add a little distressing onto the canvas sheet that I made. So I'm using some archival ink and I'm just using a sponge and I'm just applying it to the edge. And you can kind of see how it just adds just enough texture and interest around the edge to make it look like it's distressed. So now I'm gonna adhere the canvas sheet to the panel and I'm applying it using some tacky glue. I'm just gonna spread it out using a card. I can use a piece of cardboard as well. And then I'll put it into place. I just made sure that I added the glue right up to the edge of that canvas sheet. I'm gonna just smooth it out using a bone folder and I'll just remove any excess glue that might pop out and I'm gonna allow that to dry. All right, our piece is all dry. Now I'm gonna add my favorite little touch and that is branches. I had foraged these on a nature walk just on some trails that are really close to my home, which is awesome. And I'm just trimming them down to size and then I'm gonna use some hot glue to put them into place. You could add some moss to this as well. I think that would be a really pretty touch. I think a project like this is so versi versatile. You can put any type of quote on the inside or choose your favorite Christmas carol and print it out. I think that would just be so beautiful. I think also you could put some sheet music in behind the printout as well. I think that would be beautiful. So I'm just gonna continue to add some branches here and there until I get a look that I love. I found this lantern at Value Village for $2.99 and let me tell you it's seen better days. You can see it had been transformed several times and the glass is missing. I wanted to renew it by giving it a coat of the Heirloom White Satin Rust-Oleum Spray Paint. I tried to distress this piece but it just wasn't working out so I'm like well I'm gonna just try out the spray paint and I have to say I am really loving how this turned out. The spray paint held on really really well. So once I gave it a few coats I allowed it to dry and set and now I'm gonna decorate the inside. I dove into my stash of bottle brush trees. I applied a lot of glue on the bottom of that tree and pressed it into the center of the inside of this lamp. I'm also gonna be using some battery operated fairy lights. This particular set has the cork bottle type battery pack, but you can use any battery pack that you have. I just like the size of this as I wanted to place this battery pack on the inside of this lantern. I'm gonna be using these Velcro pieces to adhere to the battery pack. It just makes it easier to pull it in and out so I can change out the batteries as needed. 
just make sure you have the Velcro attached on the opposite side of the switch and the battery pack just so that those are accessible. I just removed the backing and I'm placing it where I can access that battery pack easily so I can turn that switch on or off. All right, so you could use these lights any way you'd like. If you want to wrap them around your tree, go right ahead. I just loosely placed them inside. I wanted it to look like dancing little fireflies around the tree. Next, I then used just some hot glue and I applied some to the bottom of the lantern and then press this fiber fill into place that hid the base of the tree and also kind of gave it a nice snowy look. I'm going to be using this as a night light in my kid's bathroom. So I thought that this casual look would look really, really nice. I just wanted one last little touch. So I dove into my stash of ribbon. I found this really pretty striped neutral ribbon from Dollar Tree in my stash and I just tied off a simple basic bow. And that's it. This project couldn't be any easier and would make a great gift or Christmas decor. So for this next piece, my mom found this free at the side of the road and grabbed it for me. It is such a unique piece. It's a pedestal recipe holder. And I thought it was so, so cool. I knew exactly what I wanted to do. So I just had to pop those little rings out so I could remove the index cards. And then this here, the flower is actually just a decal. It's not hand painted. So I didn't feel bad about what I'm about to do. So I'm just gonna clean it up. And then using that Rust-Oleum Heirloom White Satin Spray Paint, I took it out to my garage and gave it two to three coats of the spray paint. Again, it held really, really well. I was quite impressed with it. So once I had it all coated, I allowed it to dry well. And while that was drying, I'm going to work on the cards. So I thought these index cards would be great to use for say a prayer list or maybe your family's favorite Bible verses or quotes, but I want to use mine as an advent calendar. So I grabbed a selection of some beautiful scrapbook paper that I got from Michael's last year at end of season, believe it or not. I'm using the index cards that came with it as my template. So I'm just measuring them out and then I'll know the dimensions that will fit really well. Now this was less than three inches wide, but I just made it an even three inches just for ease of cutting. So I cut out several pieces. I think I had yeah, a total of 25 of assorted papers. I wanted one for each day in December. Now, of course, make adjustments to suit what you want to use it for. Say if you are going to be following a specific advent plan, then of course you can make those adjustments accordingly. So I've got all my papers all sorted out and now I am going to do the hole punching. So I'm using again, one of the original cards as my template marked out where the holes need to be Used just a basic hole punch and punched those holes as needed. Now to make it go a little bit faster, I stack two of the cards on top of each other and use the, card as you can see as my template. So I'm just going to go through all of these until I've got that done. Now I'm going to start to decorate just one of the cards just to give you an idea. I'm using a corner rounder paper punch. I like the look of it. I thought it would look really pretty. Just gives it a little bit of a decorative touch. And now I'm also distressing the edges with some distress oxide uh, ink and the peeled paint color. It's a pretty green color and you can see it just gives it a hint of color all along the edge, but feel free to do anything you would like on your cards. Now, just for a little decoration, I've got a selection of stickers and stamps, even word stickers. 
of course use whatever is in your stash i'm just going to make sure that whatever i put on my cards is nice and flat so I really like these stickers that I had in my stash. I, stash, I like the natural nature look. I really love this car, red cardinal and then I wanted to add a word onto this as well. So I'll just remove the backing of the stickers and put them into place on top of the card. So you can pre-decorate these as you'd like or decorate as you go through each day of the month, however you want. There are so many options to this. Another idea to decorate is to use the little cutter parts from paper pads as well. You can just glue those down. That would be really pretty. And this is another fun idea. So if you haven't heard of December daily, it's just where you document every day in the month of December. And this is one that I did back in 2017. And it's a great family memento. The kids can get involved or grandkids. And I will leave a link explaining how December daily works below. But I thought this would be really fun to place on, on the pedestal as well and it's so fun to take part in. Okay, so the paint is all dry and now I'm gonna just distress the edges a little bit. I wanted the wood grain to come through just a little, not too much. So I'm just using a coarse grain or coarse grit sandpaper. I'm just going around the edges and I'm even going in those little grooves, as you can see right there, just to have that wood grain pop through just a little bit. Of course, you can distress it in as much as you want, it's just personal preference. I have to say the spray paint worked really well for this piece. All right, so I added my cards back on, and of course you can add any advent plan you'd like, or if you want to do December daily or Bible verses, whatever you would like to do. So I am just going to add just a little decoration at the base by adding a little mini wreath of pip berries. And again, decorate this any way you would like. At the top there above the cards, you could put something there as well, but I decided to leave mine blank. So I have the option of using this year round. There are so many different options on how to use this place piece. I am absolutely loving it and I can't wait to put it to use. I found this really big shadow box for $2. I couldn't believe that it was only $2. I picked it up at our local thrift store and it was a bit beaten up. Somebody had put a candle in there so there was wax dripped on the inside and there were some scuff marks and it was just really dirty inside so I had to give it a good cleaning. So I just used a sanding block to get rid of all that wax. And then I used a cream colored antique white and just a flat matte black paint. And I gave this a good paint. Now, I will admit, <laughs> I did struggle with the white paint a bit. It came out really blotchy, but I thought, you know what? It just adds to that rustic charm that I really like. So I just went with it. So I just gave this piece two coats of my white off-white antique white paint, allowed it to dry well, and then I also painted the black. Now you could, I could have just left the black, but I didn't like how shiny it was. So I went ahead and gave this, I believe it was three coats of the matte black. Now I could have spray painted it, but then that would have meant I had to tape off all the white paint or the white walls on the inside. So I just decided to go ahead and give it, um, yeah, three coats of the black paint. So I had allowed it all to dry well and now to decorate the inside. I went into my stash of bottle brush trees and I just grabbed a couple of sizes. And then I also went into my stash of foraged branches. Of course, if you know me by now, I love using branches and other natural elements in my decor whenever I can. So I thought this would be perfect for this particular project. I'm just snipping them down to size until they fit inside and I'm just gluing them to the back. Mm -hmm. 
So another really nice touch would be to use some scrapbook paper at the back if you didn't like all that black. All right, so now I dove into my stash of battery operated fairy lights. I like this particular type because it's got a really small battery pack. I picked it up a few years ago from my local dollar store, but of course use whatever you can get your hands on. Again, I'm just using some Velcro on the bottom of the battery pack just to make it easier to take in and out and change the batteries as needed. This has got a total of 30 lights on it. Uh, it provides a really beautiful glow for this piece. So I just am starting to anchor down the fairy lights and then I am going to start to weave them around the bat branches on the back. If anything comes loose, then of course, please feel free to add more glue as needed. So as I was going along, I decided to turn the lights on because then I could see the placement of the fairy lights better. Uh, that's just a little tip that I like to do. I don't know why I didn't do it to start, but <laughs> now I have done that and it's making it so much easier to see where I need to put those little lights. So I'm partway through my strand and then I decided that I wanted to put my bottle brush trees into place so I can weave some of those fairy lights into the trees. So another fun little idea would be to add some little woodland critters if you'd like. I decided to keep mine simple just by using the branches, lights, and the bottle brush trees. So here you can see I'm just going in and adding just a little bit of hot glue here and there as some of the pieces came loose. And then I am going to go in and add some more branches. Now the reason why I'm doing that is because I wanted to camouflage some of those wires that you can see in the background and this helped to do just that. Alright, so once you have all your decorative elements into place, you can then start to use some fiber fill as your snow or whatever else you have that you like to use for snow. Again, I'm just using hot glue and then pressing that fiber fill into place just to camouflage the base of the tree as well as the battery pack. I decided to add this cute little gold sparkle tree as just a focal point. I really like the look of that. I think it looks so pretty and whimsical. And then that is it. I am so impressed with how this turned out and the glow is just so magical. Here is a recap of all the pieces that we made. Dollar Tree has some new village pieces and they come pre-lit ready to go. I am going to be covering them all with a coat of some nice smooth gesso. Now you can get this brand that I picked up from Dollarama here in Canada, but you can get one similar at Michael's, the Artist Loft brand. It is a nice smooth consistency as well. So you'll give them a coat and allow them all to dry. Now I have created a village scene out of these pieces in the past. I will have that video linked down below and there is a cabin in there as well. 
but I will be getting to that next. All right, so pick out some paints in the colors that you like. I'm using warm white and I'll be using burnt umber for the roof. I am wanting to go with some vintage colors, so I thought this warm white was so fitting. On this church, I am going to be giving it two coats of the paint and I will allow it to dry well. For this house, I'm using this sea spray color from Deco Art. It's beautiful. And again, I am going to be using burnt umber for the roof. This is a gorgeous color. It really reminded me of a vintage misty minty green or blue color. I thought it was perfect. For this house, I am giving it a coat of leaf green. Now, it ended up being too dark and too bright. So in, in a minute here, I'll show you, I ended up lightening up this green and all I did was mix a bit of that warm white in with it and it just toned it down and made it look more of a vintage color. So I'll show you that here in a minute. All right, so now I'm going to paint the roofs in uh, the burnt umber and I gave them all two coats of the burnt umber. If you don't feel like pan painting these, you can definitely spray paint as desired. All right, so here is that house. It is definitely a nice a light green and this one had some finials on the top, so I am painting those out in a silver. Okay, so the paint is all dry on all of our pieces. On this church, you can see all the beautiful texture on the roof, and I wanted to bring that to life. So I'm using some black paint and I'm going to water it down and I'm applying this wash using a soft bristle brush. Now it's going to drip so just be careful that you don't get it on the other part of the church. I'm just going to apply it all over the roof then take a rag and gently dab it off. What this is going to do is just create a more distressed look as if you know some mildew or mold had started to grow all over the roof. You can see in the corner there the difference between the uh, wash that I did and then the roof without the wash. So you're gonna allow that to dry well and I am doing the same technique on each roof. can see the beautiful distressed look we created on the roof. All right, so before we do the next step, I'm going to give all our houses a coat of this matte varnish by Deco Art. I wanted to make sure that the craft paint was all sealed up. It is quite porous and it absorbs a lot of different things. So I needed to seal this before I do our next step. So I'm gonna give the entire piece a coat of this varnish and allow it to dry well. All right, it's all dry and now I'm going to give the bottom portion of our church a coat of this walnut gel stain. Again, this is by Deco Art. I'm applying it using a paintbrush and I'm making sure I'm focusing on the detailed parts and then you'll need a rag and you'll dab it off. You can see it really gives it a nice aged look. I will be doing the same thing to all of our pieces. So all the houses are drying and now I'm working on embellishments. I've got this wood laser cut star. It was just from my stash. I'm applying some antique gold paint to that and then I will allow that to dry well. Next, I am going to create some mini wreaths. This is just some evergreen pipe cleaner. I got this from a local dollar store, but you can definitely pick this up at, I believe it's Hobby Lobby. And I just created a little loop around my finger and I'm trimming out the center just to redefine the shape of a wreath. Next, I am also going to be 
um, aging some little bells that I had. Again, these were, I believe, from the thrift store, actually. I am going to be using some cinnamon and some decoupage glue. I'd apply the decoupage glue to the bell and then apply some cinnamon on top. Now this was recommended by a viewer to create a rusted look and I have to say it turned out really well. I'm going to be showing you this technique in another part of this video coming up here so definitely keep watching. You do not want to miss it. It is amazing how well it worked. So here I am applying the cinnamon to the glue and I'm allowing those to dry. Now it's time to start to decorate all our little village pieces. This church, I'm adding just a little do dollar store bottle brush tree. This house, I'm adding a star and a wreath. And then for this next house, I am going to just be adding a little wreath and those cute little bells. Now with the bells, I did want to create just a little bit of a simple loopy bow. So I have this string here. I'm adding a little bit of decoupage glue to the end to make it easier to thread. Again, that was a suggestion by a viewer. Thank you very much for all these tips. I really appreciate them. So I'm just tying the bells together and then just creating a simple bow. And then I'll use my hot glue to attach those to the front. I am loving how rustic these look, but yet they still have their Victorian appeal. And I'm so happy that Dollar Tree has already added the lights in for us. And I will show you that in a moment. Here they are at dusk and they're all lit up and I am loving the warm glow. This is definitely a very affordable way to create a Christmas village if that is something that is on your list of to do's. Dollar Tree has had these gingerbread house templates for a couple of years now and I love them. People do some beautiful things with them but I love creating cabins out of these and so I have created one before. I'm gonna again have that video link for you down below but people couldn't get a certain supply that was used in that particular video so I thought I would show you another version on how to create this. So here I am just showing you how to remove any of those um, embellishments if you want to reuse them. Uh, somebody again had suggested heating them up and then using a flat tool to pop them off. I have to say these are so well gl glued down this year kudos to you Dollar Tree. Last year I could take them off very easily but this year I struggled I a bit. Anyways I did manage to get them off. Now the one piece I definitely needed for my particular cabin is this roof peak. So I popped this off of two of these gingerbread house templates. Now the uh, window parts, I am going to be doing something else, but again, if you want to use those, definitely hang on to them. But if you're not going to be using them, then don't worry about popping those off. All right, so I managed to create a little damage, but that is okay. You're actually not going to see any of that. All right, so here is the easy part. We are going to be using wood grain scrapbook paper. You'll want to have the flat side that's got no decorative elements on the house panel. You want the back side of it facing down on the back side of your scrapbook paper and then you're going to trace it out 
and then cut it out once you have that all traced out. Now, what we're gonna be doing is actually applying that paper to these wood panels. But first off, this is totally optional. I want to pop out the windows as I want to create a light up cabin. And to create that warm glow coming through the windows, we need to cut the windows out. So I am just tracing around where you can see right here using a pencil and ruler. I've got them all drawn out. And then on a hard surface, I am going to be using a craft knight and cutting through all the fibers following the lines that I had created. Now this did take me a little while. I had to apply quite a bit of pressure, but once I cut all the way through, they popped out very easily. If you decide to skip this step, then you can definitely create a faux glow by painting windows in on the surface of your scrapbook paper, or you could even use scrapbook paper to create some kind of glow. You'll just have to dig through your stash of papers to see what you have that will work. So to apply the scrapbook paper, I am using tacky glue. I really like tacky glue. I find that it adheres paper really well to the surface. You just have to make sure you add enough. So I've applied it everywhere up to the edge and then I'm smoothing it all out with a craft stick. And I'm making sure again, I'm getting it right up to the edge and I'm making sure I have enough applied everywhere. So then I don't get any bubbles. So I'm taking my finger and I'm making sure any of the spots that didn't get glue will get the glue once I move it around with my fingers. You can see me doing that there. Working on a protected surface, you're going to want to line your scrapbook paper up on, on your wood panel, just like this. And then you're going to need to flip it over or smooth it all out. Make sure it's, again, it's all lined up. Once it's all smoothed out and you've removed excess glue, you'll want to apply some weight to it and allow that to dry. All right, so here I decided to pop that one window back in because I decided I am going to be doing something here in a minute. And I wanted that window panel back in just so I don't accidentally cut the paper out. So I'm just using my X-Acto knife and a hard surface and I'm just trimming out the windows. And I, I'm going to do that with the door as well. Next, I am going to be going around the edge and trimming off any excess that remained. So I'm gonna be using these rectangular wood planks. I got mine from Dollarama, but you can get these at Dollar Tree as well. You'll need four of them. This is what we're gonna be using to create our side panels for our cabin. So you can see I'm just making sure that two will be enough. If you don't have these, you can use some craft sticks. Now, Walmart, believe it or not, has these jumbo craft sticks. And I thought these would be a great alternative to build up a wall. I'm gonna be using one of those jumbo craft sticks to brace my two wood planks together in the middle. And I'll just be doing that by using some hot glue. But of course, if you'd like, you can use some wood glue or any favorite glue that you have in your stash. We have our two panels ready to go. I'm just trimming off the end of our craft sticks with the craft knife. And I'll do that for each side on both panels. All right, so you do need a total of three pieces of the same scrapbook paper. So I am going to be using this to cover my side panels as well. So I'm just flipping them over and I'm just going to trace around. Actually, I'm just going to use the, the knife straight up, but of course you can trace around it and then cut it out with some scissors. Mm -hmm. 
Once your scrapbook paper is all cut out, again, we're gonna be using our tacky glue and applying it all over to the surface. And just the same as we did for the house panels, I am going to be using a craft, craft stick to smooth it out. And then my finger just to fill in any of those spots that I missed. Again, apply the paper on and then apply some weight to it until it is dry. All right, so on to something really, really cool. Dollar Tree has these corrugated tin plaques and I removed the hanger from them. And then next I have got three different colors of paint. I have got black, burnt umber and burnt sienna. I'm going to use a rag and I'm applying some black all over the surface and as you can see I'm just dabbing it on just randomly and my rag is kind of crinkled up a bit just to create some texture so I'm just going to dab it all over and then I'm going to allow it to dry. Next I'm using my burnt, uh, burnt umber. Again, same thing, I'm applying it just randomly all over the surface and I'm just making sure that I'm still seeing the tin and I'm still seeing the black paint and I am focusing on some corners a little more or a few spots here and there a little more than others and again you'll want to allow that to dry and now I'm using the burnt sienna. So I'm adding less and less and I'm focusing more and more on specific spots just like you would see on an actual tin roof that's rusted. It's kind of blotchy and all over the place and that is kind of the look that I'm trying to recreate. So you can see the difference between the two panels here and I'm impressed so far but this next technique again was suggested by a viewer. I'm using some matte decoupage glue and I'm just applying it here and there, focusing on those heavily painted areas. And then I'm going to sprinkle some cinnamon. Now I have to say, this just took it to the next level. I was amazed at how well this turned out. So I'm just working in sections and then I will remove some, go back in with some glue and cinnamon again until I get a look that I like. So I do have a video on how you can rust tin with like actual rust, but I discovered that it doesn't work on all tin pieces that I have bought from Dollar Tree. So this is a great alternative, especially if you don't feel like uh, the waiting process of allowing something to rust. I'm going to have that video linked down for below for you in case you do decide that you want to try it out. So I removed the excess, just tapped it off, and then I went in with a rag. And again, I just removed a bit more and you can see how amazing this is. Now I did decide to go in and seal it up with some matte sealer. I didn't want the cinnamon to slowly rub off. So I thought this was a great option to seal it. All right, so while those are all drying, I am now going to focus on these peaks. As you can see, the colors didn't match up. So I'm using my um, antique white and I'm going to be giving them a coat of paint and I will allow those to dry as well. I'm using this snowy mesh from Dollar Tree. It comes in other colors. If you can't get this, burlap would be a great option or you can use some tulle, whatever you can find. And we are going to be covering the windows as well as the door. So I'm just cutting some pieces down to size for the door and the windows. Once you have your pieces all cut out, I'm gonna be applying this with some hot glue. So I just run a bead and then I'm using this silicone brush. This was a tip from Holly at Hot Humble Pie. Thank you for that tip, Holly. It works really, really well. I'm just adding this in sections and then smoothing it out with that silicone brush. Mm -hmm. 
So our windows are all filled in and now I'm going to trim the window frames out using these sticks that I had foraged. If you don't have any sticks, you can definitely reuse all those wood embellishments that we popped off from earlier if you still have them. And then you might also need a few extra little craft sticks to frame some of the windows out as well. So I'm just cutting my little branches down to size and I'm applying them using some hot glue. Now you can apply these twigs on the inside of the window as well if you wanted to camouflage any of that raw wood, but I didn't want that to shrink up my window sides the size of the window so I'm just going to add my twigs twigs to the outside and then I'm going to be filling in uh, the where the raw wood is with a pencil crayon and I'll show you that in a minute but I also wanted to show here that I am applying some larger branches around the door just to make that look like a bit more of a statement piece All the windows and the doors are all trimmed out and now you can see where the lighter raw wood color is showing through so I'm just using a brown pencil crayon and I'm just coloring that out. You can use some paint as well, anything that you'd like that you would think would work best for you. So one thing I forgot to show on my last cabin was a chimney. So this time I am showing you how to create a chimney. I'm using these tumbling blocks that I picked up from Dollar Tree and as you can see I just line them all up on the back side of my house panel here and I ended up using two layers. Now I'm going to be gluing four blocks together to create one set and I will be doing that for all of the pieces going all the way up. One thing you'll want to make sure you do is that you make sure everything stays all lined up and even with each other. So I just push them all together until I can feel that everything is even. Once you've got all your sets of four glued together, then you can glue those sets all together to create one long block. Now I am going to be covering this with this distressed brick scrapbook paper that I had bought from Michael's. It was several years ago. I'm going to be wrapping it up with this. Now, if you don't have this brick pattern, then definitely dig around to see what you can find or go to your craft store to see what you can find that you like. You might even be able to put some rocks on it. So you can see I'm using my tacky glue and I'm working in sections and I'm going to apply that and then press it down into the scrapbook paper. allow it to set up a bit and then I'm going to continue to work each of the different sides. There is one side that I don't end up completely covering so I'll show you that here in a minute but just continue to work. I end up trimming the paper a little bit just to help me fold the paper around a bit better. You can see that right here I take my scissors and just cut right up against the edge. So I'm only going to need a few inches at the top that actually needs paper. The rest of it won't need paper on the back side of our chimney. So I, as you can see, I laid it down, trimmed it off, and then I rolled it back up and I trimmed it off again. And that left a little bit of a flap for me to wrap the top. So that will be the top of our chimney. I'm applying some glue again and I'll be finishing that off. Now you could wrap the whole thing if you'd like, but I don't know, I just wanted the raw wood to be sitting up against the back of the house. I just figured that it might have better adhesion. I'm not sure, <laughs> but I thought, you know what, I'm just gonna do it that way. But of course, feel free to do it however you would like. All right, so I wanted to distress this, so I'm using this frayed burlap distress oxide ink. 
and I'm using just a sponge and I'm applying it all over the surface. I allowed that to dry and next I'm adding some pebbles just to the top and the base of the chimney. Now I used hot glue but I discovered that there was a little bit of like a chalky substance on these rocks so I ended up going back in a little later and adding a bit of silicone and hot glue to these rocks just to really help them hold together. So it's just going to be kind of like a puzzle. You'll just have to play around with the rocks that you have to see how they all fit together. So I'm just checking to make sure that I have left enough room to apply some rocks all the way around the top because you will be seeing the top of the chimney from every direction of our cabin. So now I just finished that off and I added some to the bottom as well. You just want to make sure you don't add any rocks to the back side on the bottom. Otherwise, it's not going to sit flush up against your cabin. So now just to match up the grunginess of the rest of the chimney, I'm adding the frayed burlap Distrex Oxide using a stiff bristle brush on the rocks and then on the inside of our chimney as well at the top. I'm going to set that aside and allow it to dry. All right, so our panels are all nice and dry and ready to go. We are going to start to assemble our cabin. I'm using these tumbling blocks as braces. I'm just figuring out where I need to place those tumbling blocks. So I'm just going to put them down, make sure that they're not going to be in the way of our little window. And then I'm going to start to glue those pieces down. So I did end up discovering that I needed to trim down these side panels. I will show you in a bit here uh, what I did, but at this point that you can trim it off before you add all these pieces. Um, but I'll show you that if you make the mistake like I did, uh, then you do have an option. So I'm just making sure all my wood pieces are in place properly and I'm adding extra glue for bracing. And then I'm going to be using a combination of tacky glue and hot glue. You just want to make sure you have all your tumbling blocks in the right spot. So again, you don't have them sticking out in your window. <laughs> So I'm adding a bead of the tacky glue right along the edge and then I'm adding hot glue onto our tumbling blocks. Once you add the hot glue, you will need to work quickly to apply it to the wood panel. You just want to make sure everything's lined up properly and then press it to make sure everything is nice and straight. I'm adding more hot glue just for some extra bracing. If at any time any of these instructions are confusing, you can slow down the speed of your videos. So just keep that in mind and then you can watch this at a slower pace. So I'm doing the same thing for the other panel and then I will be doing the same for the back panel as well. So here you can see that the nozzle of my tacky glue is thin enough to get underneath that one panel there as well as my hot glue gun. Again, you need to work quickly to put this into place. Just make sure you have it all even so that your house isn't all distorted. All right, so everything is all set up. Now I'm adding an extra brace at the roof. This is a square dowel that I picked up from Dollar Tree, but you can use a regular dowel or whatever you have in your stash. I just measured it and now I'm just cutting it down to size. Next, I'm gonna be using some hot glue to put it into place. As you can see, I am putting it into place so that the edge is facing up, so it looks a bit more like a diamond. And there is a reason for that. So you do have a few moments of some wiggle room to make sure that this is nice and straight. And then once that glue is set, you can now get out those roof pieces. So typically a tin roof will go the long way down, but my tin did not fit. 
properly so I am going to have the ripples go downwards. So as you can see my side panels here they are a little bit too tall so I have to go in and trim it down a little bit so I'm just measuring out how much I need to trim and then I use a craft knife, craft knife and a ruler and I'm pressing down hard to cut through the paper and some of the wood fibers and then I'm going to be using a tool and I'm going to slowly start to break that. This actually worked quite well. I was pressing really hard and this piece held together beautifully. So I just continued to work on this until I was able to snap off that top ledge. Now, if <laughs> my measure, I thought I had measured everything properly, but I didn't. So um, if you find that you, you have that, maybe try to trim it off before you um, apply all the pieces together. But just so you know, you do have that option like I just showed you. All right. So now to apply my tin but first i needed just a few extra pieces of supports i wanted really good adhesion for my roof peak as well so i'm adding three tumbling blocks on both sides of my roof peak support and now i know i'm going to have really good support for my roof the edge the side edge sits really nicely in one of those little grooves on our tin roof. So I am applying this using some Gorilla silicone adhesive. This stuff works really, really well. I really like it. But one thing I should have done and I didn't was to use an additional bit of hot glue while this was setting. I do end up adding some, but I should have at this point and I didn't. So that's a little tip for you. <laughs> Honestly, I, this has been a project where you kind of figure things out along the way and I was trying to do things a little bit differently from my last one so this was a bit of a trial and error. So here you can see I'm adding the hot glue now just under the roof line right where they meet the side panel. I'm allowing the hot glue to set and now I'm going to do the same for the other side. You're not even going to see that hot glue so if it's a bit messy that's all right. I did end up going in and smoothing it out with my finger a little bit. My glue gun is a lower temp so I did not burn my finger so just be aware of that. All right so everything's starting to set up now I'm just going in and adding more hot glue here and there just again to help support that roof and to prevent it from like falling apart. I, I'm amazed at how well this hot glue is actually holding to that tin. Okay, so you can see there's a little bit of a gap, but I do have a way to solve that. And we are going to first off apply these Stoey Wood Peaks. So, I need to figure out where I need to put the glue. So I'm just lining things up. You can see it's a little bit higher than it was originally placed. I'm going to flip our house upside down and then take a pencil and just outline where I'm going to have my house and snowy peak attach. So now I know where I need to place my glue. So I'm just gonna use hot glue to adhere this to the surface of our house on the roof peak. I need to do the same for the back side of our cabin, but don't forget, we need to add our chimney. So, I'm going to just figure out again where I need to attach the glue first and now bring in my chimney and now I'm going to measure out how much I need to cut away to accommodate for our chimney. You don't want to glue your chimney over top of your roof peak. It's not going to lay flat against the back of your cabin. So I just drew a line where I need to cut away the roof peak and I just use scissors to cut that. And I'm just going to measure to see how I did here. I need to trim a little bit to the right. And then I will be using again my hot glue to adhere all the pieces together. 
So I went ahead and I am gluing my roof peaks down first, but you can totally put the glue the chimney into place first if you'd prefer. You can see here I needed just to trim a little bit more away, um, but this actually worked fine for me. And so I just added both of those roof pieces and now I'm gluing down my chimney. And you just want to make sure everything is flush, including the bottom, because we need that to sit on the surface flat. All right, so you could see that I still had a bit of a gap, so I'm using moss to fill that all in. Traditionally, you'll see in the forest that cabins in the woods have got moss growing on them, and the moss will be growing on like the wood fascia, not on the tin roof. So I thought, well, this would work really well to hide that gap. Now you could trim your pieces all down so they all fit together perfectly and then you wouldn't have this gap, but I'm just trying to make it easy for all of you. And this was something I had planned on doing anyways was add some moss. So I thought this worked perfectly. Okay, so this is one step I forgot again to do earlier, and that is to hide that little piece of paneling there. So I'm going to go back in and add some scrapbook paper to cover that up, but you could use some paint as well. I'm just using some, just some decoupage glue for this one. I didn't bother to use the tacky glue this time around. It was just a small area, so I knew that it wouldn't bubble up or anything on me. So here I am just applying that scrapbook paper into place. I'll allow it to dry. And now I'm going to go in and cut it out with a craft knife. I admit this was a little awkward, so I wish I would have done this beforehand. But like I said, this is kind of like trial and error for me. I was trying to figure out how best to do this for all of you. And I am just sharing some of the errors that I made along the way. But I have to say, I am actually pretty impressed. I'm really happy with this. So I'm just going in and adding just a little bit of paint here and there just to kind of cover up any uh, ripped parts of the paper. That's where one of the rocks lifted and I went in and added some silicone adhesive to put it back into place. All right, I wasn't happy with the snowy peak, so <laughs> I decided to grunge it up a bit to make it almost look like, you know, um, when, um, a fireplace releases soot and it kind of settles in on the snow. It makes it look kind of dirty and old. Well, that's the look I decided to create for this. And to cover up that hole, I used a snowflake. And then my daughter suggested, she's like, mom, why don't you have the moss kind of draping over the edge? I'm like, actually, yeah, I kind of like that look. So I did that and I'm really happy with that. I think it just, it doesn't look so um, like sharp of an edge now. It really softened that roof line. Here I am adding some moss just at the bottom of the cabin as well. You can add some trees, that would be really nice as well. And now I'm just adding the last detail and that is our little tuft of smoke coming out of our chimney. If you have any questions or even some suggestions, please leave them down in the comment section. I am loving this cabin. It turned out beautiful. That tin roof, wow. I am blown away at how well it turned out. And I think it is perfect for this cabin. This cabin could be used year round you could definitely just change it up a little bit i added a little touch of snow on it you don't have to use the snowy mesh if you don't want oh, i just hope that this was a more achievable cabin for you to create and here it is all lit up as if we lit the fireplace inside I'd love to know what you do to prep for the upcoming holiday season and I would also love to know which one of these projects was your favorite. I appreciate each and every one of you joining me today. I hope you found a lots of inspiration in what I had to share.
you can check out some more inspiration here to the right and we shall see you in the next one. Take care. Bye.